many games. Game one, though, they just didn't have enough. And the problem is that consistency has to improve. They can't just be consistent against Samsung Galaxy. H2K has to exceed their performance. Now, they did pick blue side. Let's find out whether or not they're going to get that Syndra or if Samsung will ban it away and if Victor will be taken off the table. Yeah, H2K can actually also go for Puppy if they want to and just remove all these scaling picks from QV that he's using to sit in that side lane and be really, really annoying. Nidalee ban on blue side, on red side, sorry, not a surprise. <laughs> we expect the Syndra to come in as well from Samsung last. And we've got one game of our MF before. Uh, we're joining it. Uh, everybody's banning it nowadays. And uh, she will find herself on the bench for this game. Yeah, I wonder if H2K even would play it if they've had enough time to practice it in case Core GJ locked in Zyra in his first rotation. He obviously wouldn't have done it knowing MF was open, so she's removed. So they have uh, things like the Poppy available, and they do remove the Victor. I like that, actually. Take it away from Crown, his best champion. That means that the Rise is available, though. Is that first pick worthy for Ryu? He's been one of the great Rises of the tournament. You know, had some very strong performances on it as well. Uh, and it is dangerous to leave it up for uh, Crown. Undefeated 2-0. We've seen Olaf first picks shine through fairly frequently. Yankos had a great performance in the previous game. Where does H2K want to go with that? Yeah, we know Ambition wants to play Olaf as well. It's one of his most played champions here at the tournament. He's really liked both Olaf, if you could get in Italy. We've all seen a lot of Rek'Sai from him, but Olaf is definitely above it. Ryasto is considered such a power pick, honestly. Not exactly same exact tier as Syndra, but just under her and above the rest of the mid laners. There's the Olaf for Ambition, and that's something HK will expect and most likely go Lee Sin against it. I think Lee Sin is actually a fine pick against Olaf. You're very mobile, he's never really gonna catch you. And it's a key pick for Yangas if he wants to be a big playmaker. And when you have something like Ryze, you can set up a lot of plays very easily. Definitely true, that's exactly where I was gonna go with the next point, because you can set up a gank in the mid lane very easily uh, and Yankos has a much higher percentage of his time spent around the teammates, you know, going for those ganks, especially in mid lane. Uh, Ambition and Crown actually do not collaborate a lot in the first 15 minutes. Only other option is Elise if you want to go Jace top lane for Old Amna, so you get the magic damage jungler with the physical damage top laner. It's something we have seen a lot from H2K before we know Old Amna likes to be on the Jace, but Lee Sin is the standard choice against Olaf. There we go. Leeson and Karma will be the option. So once again, that Karma into Zyra, something you've seen a lot this world. My eye's going to be on Ryu. Um, whether or not he's going to step up his performance from game one. Got a champion that arguably has a bigger impact with the use of that ultimate. Uh, Samson Galaxy's turn to pick. Jin is available. It was banned in game one. And Rula has been a phenomenal Jin. Does he want to run that with the Zyra? Knowing you've got that range combo. Or does he want to lock in that safer Ezreal? I think you go Jin. Oh, there we go. Oh, I, I, he agrees. <laughs> oh, you're a genius. <laughs> Thank you. I just predicted that one just when he locked it in. But no, I think Jin is such a power pick for a lot of these Korean native carries that are so good with skill shots. And we've seen it time and time again how Jin can do extremely well in the laning phase. And then in the mid game with Ghost Blade, he can create so many picks and has so much damage. My question now is, will Forgiven go back to the Ash? Because he has played it a decent amount before. Uh, but I mean, is that something he really wants to bring out versus the Jin? You can you can Ash Arrow the Jin as soon as he opens up for his ultimate. It also gives you pick potential, right? You know, on something like Cassiopeia or Zyra, which is Zyra's been the prime target for those Ash Arrows. They do play a lot of Lucian. If they really want to win the laning phase, it's kind of forgiven special pick still. It's so coming something like Lucian with a range support and try and, and play around that bottom side and see if you can snowball him. I like Ash though, personally. I think actually it's, she's a super good choice as you highlight. Seems like Forgiven wants to go back to Sivir once again. And Ooh. again, it's a little bit of a tricky laning phase for the H2K bottom lane. Definitely not one where you dominate 2v2. No, it's not, but there's so much mobility on that side. Rise, Lee Sin, Karma, Sivir. And allow them to run circles around Samsung Galaxy. They're going to need all that mobility to dodge every single shock blast that Cuve will be firing out. And you've got a terrifying pick, uh, amount of pick on the side of Samsung. Somebody gets rooted down and poked down. And Ambitions, Olaf will run them down. Yeah, honestly, there's a lot of damage on both of these compositions. Uh, and we were, are probably in for another game with a lot of early fireworks. I think H2K kind of ran out of options when it came to top lane pick. I couldn't really go Jace due to the amount of physical damage already with Lee Sin and Sivir. So went for Rumble where Jace is a very standard pick against it because you can just rush Hextringer on Jace and you 
can actually start beating this Rumble in the side lane. So we have kind of the same situation as last game where QV, once he gets a bit of time, will start taking over that top side and Odama has to TP into team fights to have an impact in the game. And I do really like the Rumble uh, versus something like the Jin and the Zyra. That's such a low mobility backline. It makes it very easy to land that ultimate on. Also, Ryu can get in there. Two second snare from Ryze is no joke if you have to sit on the entire thing. Yeah, HK's composition can very easily play around bottom side. You have Ryze who can use his ulti to get over certain walls and actually get behind the enemy bot lane tower. And then TPing in with that Rumble you just highlighted, Kobe. And you have a lot of AoE and a lot of ways to fight on the bottom side of the map. Problem is this Jace can get out of hand, top lane. So they have to be able to pull some of these plays off. We'll find out how well QB can handle the Jace. Odo Wamne showed off during the quarterfinals. Yesterday, last game of the day, wasn't going to help out the Rocks Tigers. You guys at home, jump onto Twitter, let us know which plays you remember most using that hashtag World's Big Plays. We're loading up for game two as H2K are down 0-1 against Samsung Galaxy. Yeah, definitely excited to see how that top lane does turn out because we've seen Jace's just take over the game. And this is QV once again showing how flexible of a top laner he is. He hasn't played a game of Jace this season and yet taking it right into Odo Omne's Rumble. Also taking it right into the same bush. Yeah, no but they're, they're taking more people with them. <laughs> we got top laner here. Like, all right, we're going to just run right straight through this brush. I'm actually happy to see Vander not go further forward because he's had a few um, whoopsies in the early game throughout Worlds. Um, a couple of those face checks and biting off way more than he was able to chew. A lot of them revealed, though, and you can see here, Yankos and Odo Omne up here are going to leave the ward on red buff. So H2K will start out with a little bit of extra information here on Ambition. Yeah, they obviously know that most junglers like to start on top side of the map. Olaf as well wants to go down, get red buff, and then get blue after when he's out of mana. Well, that's the thing. A lot of Olafs will start on the blue buff for a faster clear uh, to be able to spam those out. The Krug smite, though, is very good for Olaf as well because he gets so much attack speed. But also with Ambition getting later blue buff now, he can actually have more impact on the map after he's clear, where he's still going to be fine on HP, can contest Rift Scuttler, maybe look for level 3, level 4 gank, something we have definitely seen before from these Olaf with the Ghost early game. The important thing to me is that the ward on this red is going to see the exact path of Ambition, and Lee Sin is perfect for killing Olaf when he gets low health in the jungle. There's something I've been prepping the entire tournament since we've seen <laughs> Olaf. He likes to get low in the jungle, so he gets more attack speed, and Peanut on at rocks was the only guy to go in and try and kill Olaf in his own jungle while he was low. Ambition is actually chugging a potion fairly early there, though, uh, not going with the uh, kind of greedy route for Olaf where he doesn't chug any and gets low. I feel like we've seen this before from a Zyra going Windspeaker. <laughs> The classic, uh, whoops, wrong page. How many times does a pro have to do that before you rethink your way? Yeah, I'm like... Is it really great? Well, what's happening there? You, know, you chuck a potion, and then you get a, like two ar one, <laughs> one armor. Yeah, definitely wants uh, Thunderlords on it, so a bit of a misclick for poor JJ, but he sh should still be okay in the lane. And we get to see another warp being placed by H2K on the blue buff now. Yankos is not in a position to contest it, however. He did grump wolves into Raptors. Could actually rush over, but obviously with Ambition skipping his Raptor camp, he's already at the blue buff and will be able to secure it, get that mana back, and still healthy enough to impact the map. Definitely healthy and he's got that mana. He's getting banded down in the bottom lane, trading with 4JJ. Good boomerang for Forgiven, but he's out of consumables. Plus, the, another big thing is that Ambition saw that ward place, so he knows that they've been tracking him. He so knows, they know. Ex I mean, it adds so so much. If you know the information that everyone else is working off of. That's why I love to see the players that uh, will play those mind games where when you know you're exiting to Fog of War, uh, very obviously go for... Uh, one direction and then well something sneaky here like Yankos is doing when you have the Raptor smite which lets you know Ooh, that you have not risky. been spotted by a ward. Never mind, he got the ward down. Okay from uh, Yankos gonna spot ambition here. Another option was just to take Rift Scuttler because he was actually waiting for Ryu to return to lane. Ryu had to go back to get the early tier. He wants to give the blue buff to Ryu and had to wait for him to come back. So he could actually done Rift Scuttler, decided to go for Raptor, see if Maybe Ambition wasn't there. Yeah, I mean, the problem is that you have to catch him low. Otherwise, Olaf will absolutely destroy Lee Sin there in the one versus one. I mean, Ambition is already out to that level lead, you know, up that one camp. And uh, Yanko has been trying to walk around and get more information, but Ambition is going to grind out that lead. 
Yeah, it was definitely just a play to steal away a camp and not really kill the old <laughs> one. Not this time around. Every time we look at that bottom lane, Ruler and Cordia J are trading blow for blow with Forgiven and Vanda as Ambition spots out the ward. Odo realizes he's now in trouble. Trinket was just recently used, so gonna be in the dark for a little while. But it's always fun because Yanko saw Ambition at the Raptor camp. Old Armor has like a rough time in his head of when could Ambition be top lane, so he goes down, places the ward just at the right time, finds Ambition as well, so they now see him on top side, and they don't die to a potential gang or are forced to flash away. So it's all about tracking the jungler and having these rough timers in your head. And that's why some junglers do crazy moves where they do the unpredictable, because then the timer is kind of off, and you can gank maybe five seconds before the guy would it otherwise water. Oh, big damage from Cubate. Jumps to the skies and puts the hammer down. Samsung Galaxy have already farmed a few hundred gold lead. They're up in CS in every single one of the lanes. It's a small amount now. But that trickle will eventually become a downpour unless HCK start to get some items under their belts. And the biggest problem area there that I see, uh, you know, with that issue is the bottom lane. Again, HCK decide to go with this Sivir pick for Forgiven, which is gonna, you know, lose the early stages of the lane like this. You have to really worry about how low your tower gets. The snowball that you can pull off of a first store gold, especially with an AD carry like Jin that builds flat armor penetration super early on, can. Uh, Get after a pretty good snowball. QV is going to walk away. A lot of damage. Modo going to force out that acceleration gate. But it's, it's where we have to talk about Forgiven and his champion pool because he hasn't shown Jin professionally at all. Uh, we looked at his solo queue account. He has been playing it a lot actually this week. It's his most played champion for the last seven days. But if he's not confident enough on it, if the team hasn't practiced with it because he hasn't played it for such a long time, you don't just randomly pull it out now. And that can be a big issue for Play 2 k because Caitlyn will be bad in every single game. And that was kind of his key pick to dominate the laning phase. Sivir can push lane, but not really be a big kill threat. And that's where Forgiven's impact will get reduced. And that being said, you know, we set this up as bottom lane pushing and all that. The bottom lane turret for HUK right now is actually very healthy. Uh, and the CS discrepancy is null at the moment. So not an issue this game right now for H2K. Uh, we'll see, though, as uh, Ruler gets more and more longswords. But if you look at how HK have been winning games, and now they have to beat Samsung, it is still a little bit of an issue because they've been winning games by dominating these lanes. Like, big CS leads, take down that tower with something like Caitlyn, just keep poking away on tower, take a 2v2, maybe have Yankers come down once only. And that was one of the ways they got big leads, and, and Forgiven was super, super farmed up and fit. He's just not able to do the same because of the champion, not because of the player, but the champion. He might actually get ganked now as well, making it even worse. Well, nobody's rooted. Forgiven and Vanda looking to go up. Flash for flash, spell shield comes down. Ambition automatically exhausted. Boomerang Blade and Ricochet thrown out by for Forgiven, but double summoners down in trade for one. We jump up into the top lane. Yankos finds Cube. Odo throws down a great equalizer, turns the attention. The Back king! Third, Yankos, the king lives! <laughs> And the king can go in and steal a red buff because they see Olaf down bottom. Meanwhile, Samsung will be happy to take this Infernal Drake. Seen this before, game one was defined by H2K's inability to convert objectives. How much damage will they get on the top lane turret? I don't think they'll take it down. Well, there's no teleport for Jace, and Yankos is still on top side. He can actually go back up to top lane and just sit between the two towers if he wants to look for more. Seems like he's fine just taking the camp and backing away. I am a pretty huge fan of hard camping a lane like this, especially after you uh, were just able to kill him and send him back to the fountain. But it didn't look like they were setting that before this replay went off. Uh, obviously, that one was pretty textbook right there. Uh, yeah. Positioning, no big problem. Such a classic H2K move, however. Bottling gets ganked. They do survive the gank this time around, only had to use Summoners from Vander. And then Yankos is already on the other side of the map, trying to get Oda on the rolling. It's really <laughs> been the recipe for success for H2K this split. And he was setting that up well in advance. The thing is, we want to keep track of these Samsung, you know, small things that they're doing in the game. As soon as they lose their top laner's life, immediately go for that dragon and get the Infernal, which is a very big objective, you know, when we progress 10 minutes into the game. Yeah, well, take a look at the mid lane. Ryu's in trouble. Doesn't get caught by the petrifying gaze. Crown throws down the cleanse. Oh. Gets away the ghost. Vanda, no flash, remember. Takes a bunch of shots. Final curtain call. Will miss. Forgiven had the spell shield at the ready. But I want to go back. Crown plus 15 CS. This is a guy that's 
done pretty well in the laning phase, but he's already outshining Ryu both games this series. Yeah, that is again huge for Samsung because it's all about just go even at least in the early game and get to mid to late game where you are the stronger team. When you play oh, no. it, okay. Oh no, oh no, Ryu's in trouble. Here comes Ambition. Crown gets the kill. Yankos is running for his life. Crown's already flashed, so he can't chase further. But that's Samsung's first kill on the board. Everything uh, kind of going wrong for Ryu here in the first two games. Yangos is very low, he's not able to take a fight and has to just back away. And same issue as in the first game for H2K where mid lane starts falling behind. They have zero pressure in that lane and you need that pressure if you want to play very aggressive in the other lanes. Because you can't let the other mid laner roam first. Exactly, the pressure in lanes and the extra vision. Crown kites back there, very quick flash baits them in across the Miasma. And Ambition now gonna take a little bit of damage in payment for those trucks. Get to see some control from Forgiven and Vander. They don't chase into the darkness. 4JJ was waiting in the bush, but Samsung, despite giving up first blood, they're up in CS, they've got a minor gold lead. Oh. Kube sidesteps the Sonic Wave, uses the hammer, and sends Yankos away. The play he was trying to pull off before, just slightly too slow and therefore he died, but this time around, just managed to defend himself, and Ambition might be caught. Yeah, he is. Ragnarok's not available. Will get rooted down. No! Oh. He runs away! The ghost's not going to be enough. Ryu flashes forward. But that's a flashless rise in a lane that he's down 20 CS. But that's really important for H2K. They get a kill on this rise here. You got to get to that water of Ages so quickly so you can start scaling as well. You have a fairly weak mid game on this champion, and now he's caught. There's a flashless rise, a stun rise. Crown gets the kill with the help of Ruler. Roams from both bottom lanes. Here we go topside, though. All right, Odo's now gonna get uh, pressure down. The tower is the focus. Kube's running out of mana. Tower's still alive, taken down. Kube kicked over the wall. Oh. They trade one for one. Somehow, Vander goes down as well. But tower first blood to H2K. I feel like H2K's top side is doing everything they can to try and get a big advantage, but then the other side of the map are kind of letting them down, especially around this mid lane where Crown is just taking over didn't get to do a lot in the early game on Victor, but in the late game he was fantastic as always, and now he's sitting on three kills already. Massive CS lead, and this is huge for Samsung because they're so close to even already in this early game, and despite losing top tower, every other lane is doing fine. All right, let's take a look at how Vander got caught. Uh, good ulti there from Ruler. He's able to get the slow, so the follow-up there from Crown and Core JJ. The other thing I need to mention, though, is once again, you talked about, yeah, HQA, they're focusing topside. They're getting so much advantage on topside. The vision is just exploding for Samsung around Dragon Pit once again. That was their, that was their story. Last game, they had full control for the first you know, 20 minutes of the game in that area of the map, and it's true once again. They have full vision in the red quadrant jungle here of H2K with the Forge to boot. Now, it is a bit more effective for H2K to kill the Jace compared to killing the Echo like you saw in the last game. Echo obviously will be so useful late game anyway. Jace is a little bit weaker in that sense if he is behind. But Samsung are still fine trading all this pressure against the top laner to get advantage. But they need to get a tower. They haven't gotten enough damage on these towers on the bottom side. And that means H2K can now stop playing around mid and bot lane and try and snowball this advantage. Well, look at all the vision. If Samsung Galaxy have complete control of vision around the bottom half of the map, Multiple pink wards in the top, and this is allowing H2K to set up this little bit of an invade. Good pink ward from Samsung, though. They're going to spot Odo and Yankos, and boom, they take an accelerated shot blast to the face. Going to contest this Bramble back. Support from Crown and Ryu was available, but not needed as H2K back away. I'd also be very careful, because this is going to be two Infernal Drake spawns. So if you seed control of the Drake pit this time around, that's going to be a lot of firepower later in the game. Yeah. Luckily for H2K, they've gotten this top tower down so early, so now they can start sending this Rumble down to fight for these towers. They don't need to invest more ganks on top lane. Contest this Infernal Drake. Your Rumble is very, very strong. Bottom side as well, Forgiven is almost sitting on one item fully completed. Summoners will be available though, except for the flash on the Jace. Everything should be ready for H2K very, very soon at least. That yeah, feels that way. Samsung though, they've survived the early laning phase. Yes, they have given up a tower, but a thousand gold down. They've got a bunch of kills. They've got a dragon as well. And Crown is plus 40 CS, who's going to be one of the late game insurance policies for this team. 
We take a glance down in the bottom lane. The given is under a little bit of pressure. Ruza opens up with the curtain fall. First shot oh, oh. wide. Core JJ is bound. Yankos gets the kill. They turn their focus to ambition. Odo's already teleported in. Equalizer not even needed. Summon a heal used. Finally, at the end, they throw it down. Maybe overkill. This should help the dragon. But exactly as we just talked about, H2K can put the focus on the bottom lane. Samsung, I'm not sure if they thought Yankos just went nearby because they started chasing almost blind towards H2K and got caught out. Dragon being started, there's a TP coming. Oda is back in base, he's not here. No, he's not. Samsung realized this. Yankos has to get it, he's got it indeed. Tries to safeguard out, not gonna happen. Crown gets the kill. Dragon for one, maybe I, worse. Definitely worth it, I think, there for Yankos to sacrifice himself. Don't want to see those Infernals stacking up for Samsung. And he goes back in to snag it. Mid tower, though, is the one we need to look at. If Samsung can get more damage on it, they can still get a pretty good trade here. Ryu is back to defend, though. And only a few minions will hit this tower, and everything is okay. You go H2K, and this again, the focus on bottom side, because you got that top tower down so, so quickly. You don't need to camp the lane anymore, and clearly Samsung, just don't expect it. They're actually chasing into a pink ward. That's zero vision. And also knew what I'm at TP, so that's a poor play from Samsung, and they got punished for it. Definitely a lot of power there on the Rumble teleporting and as well. Even though he wasn't the determining factor, Yankos took out Core J before he got to cast a spell as Zyra was deleted. Here they go though, on the offense. Good flash from Vanda, gets him out to safety. But summer spell blown and as we crested 16 minutes, Yankos is the one with all the gold beams, plus 1,500 gold over ambition. The problem is, Crown is plus 1,500 gold over Reeve. Where would I rather want my gold, Lee Sin or Cassiopeia? I think that's a rhetorical question. Well, it's always Cass. That's that's funny to me because it comes to jungler. If, yeah, <laughs> me, Jung me, me. Jungler always deserves the gold. But honestly, if Yankos is gonna 100% their support, give him the gold. He's got that warrior enchant. He's got the hex drinker, and he's got some support in this mid lane. Look at this. Is that a five-man stack coming from mid tower? Crown's strong. He's not that strong. Yankos zoning away the slithering snake. Curtain call comes up. That feels like it might be too late, though. The tower is the focus. Ambition getting burnt down. Overheat from Odo. The tower is still up. Still survives. H2K haven't finished it off. Odo couldn't equalize because he was overheating. And the tower still stands. And H2K didn't get to commit to either of the choices yet. Didn't go for the kill. Didn't go for tower either. Both now alive. Samsung gets to live another day. And top tower takes more damage. So Samsung slowly but surely working on them. And now, down the crown. Cleanse, flash, crowns running for his life. Support from Ruler in the river. Core JJ's come up, no strangle thorns to use. Yankos looks for him, doesn't get the 100 to zero with the Dragon's Rage kick. And up in the top lane, Kube kills Odo. Yeah, again, Samsung managing to defend and then get a random kill top lane. Old Armor seems to have just been caught out. Didn't even take the trade because Cube is full HP. Well, yeah, I mean, so Odo went up there with half health. I was watching, and then uh, Cube fled. He looked like he was fleeing into the brush. Saved his uh, saved his spot there in the brush, and then uh, I'm assuming a shock blast landed to start it out because Odo didn't get much done in return. Look and at Samsung that! Two turrets for it. Yeah, and kind of like last game, just when we see something really good from HK to pick up a few kills, even got Infernal Drake this time around. Things just go wrong. I guess he just hides in the yeah. bush. Or I'm not sure thinks he's gone. Doesn't think he's still here. And then surprise. Didn't even start out with the shock blast. Ends it then. So clean. But this At the end of it, that mid tower from Samsung survived 99 HP. H2K give up kills, two towers, donate gold to Rua. Samsung's mid game is terrifyingly good. Definitely well played by Samsung, but also H2K when it really matters. But they have to make that correct call. Do we kill the Olaf? Do we kill the tower? Do we go for both? You know, it just goes a little bit wrong for them. It gets a little bit hectic. And then Samsung are just much better in terms of this overall communication and shot calling. And they get the advantage now ahead in gold as well. And remember, so much of that gold is on Crown. He's got four of the kills on this Cassiopeia and 180 CS, 185. He's almost matching Forgiven down there from the bottom lane. HK return to the side though, and they take the objective. Now it is still a 600 gold game. And Odo still has the ability to turn team fights with Equalizer. But H2K cannot afford to make those same mistakes. The clean play from Samsung 
allowed them to win game one handily, allowed Samsung to get an eight game winning streak. And once again, that is where HTK have to prove they can go blow to blow with the third seed from LCK. HTK have been able to match Samsung when it comes to skirmishes and team fights. But they've not been able to match the overall map play and Vander is getting caught out again. And every single time it's Ruler starting with that ulti. Catching someone. Yeah, the root came out from Core JJ. Forgiven being dove under tower. Strangle thorns and petrifying gaze. Keep Ryu out of the fight. Up in the top lane. Odo's overheating once again. Cannot get that equalizer down. Cubase buying his time. Accelerated shot fast. Flash into the kill. Cubase now looking for more. Flash over the wall from Yankos. Kicks Cube backwards. Enlists the help of the tower. Round wall from Ryu as well. So it's one for one, but it's gonna lose another tower. And Samsung Galaxy can extend this gold lead even further. Well played by Samsung once again, catching out H2K. This is what we just talked about. Whenever H2K has to look for the play, Samsung seems to just be a step ahead on the map. Often starts with Ruler popping that ulti, and then they try and find the support. Whoever is left alone, and they get a few kills from a nice dive as well on the given after. And really, Samsung just speeding up the game. Definitely huge props to Ruler in his rookie year, making it to semifinals of Worlds. And he was already drawing bans on the Jin. First game, not available to him. Second game, he's showing you why. Here we go, though, with uh, QV going for that turret dive. We'll be talking about in champs like how Jace can win this 1v1. Now he's far enough ahead, he can just dive on the, the tower as well. And what I'm gonna notice, I mean, if he stays around, he's gonna die. Sad for him. Stay for just half a second too long. The two players that we were looking to HTK to really step up and carry the game was Odo and Ryu. We, we kind of anticipated in order for them to win the series, those were the two guys that needed to carry. Ryu's had a tough time outclassing him. And Odo not having the greatest rumble game. What a quick glimpse there of Yankos. Jumped onto Ambition, but no real damage follow-up. And the rest of HTK peel away. Look at this Ocean Drake that's actually not terrible against some of the poke that Samson Galaxy can put down. And I get that cleanly as well. I have to go back to look at where can Odo Amna join a fight. Baron is actually being started by Samson. Only two members. Now a third one joins. Everyone else from H2K are just around mid lane. They don't even realize this is happening. They're too late to the party. Samson Galaxy are going to secure it. Baron taken. 21 and a half minutes. That mid came from Samsung. Able to. Oh, Ryu gets snared up again. Another hit from Ruler. But trading over the uh, Ocean Drake there with no vision on the Baron. You can see Samsung didn't hesitate at all. Ambition pops his Ragnarok ultimate on Olaf to further burn down that Baron even quicker. And now with a 21, sub 21, 22 minute uh, Baron there for themselves. That is ridiculously who considering how close the game was. And we just have to give so much credit to Ambition as a player for joining this team at the start of the year, start of season six, and instantly improved the shot calling on the team. They became a really good late game team suddenly when he joined. He obviously stepped up big time as a jungler as well after having a pretty poor summer split in season five on CJ. But when he actually joins this team, they get so much better later on and they're able to make these calls Again and again, Cordier Day obviously helps as well with the added communication he brings. That's what I wanted to add on there, because it seems Cordier Jason's The Gauntlet has helped the team reach another new level. Every individual player stepping up, and Samsung Galaxy looking likely to close out this second game in the semifinals. Looking likely to make it back to the final. I mean, the organization of Samsung owns a world championship title. It was completely different players. They have to, have to rebuild and restructure. But over the last two years, they've progressively improved to this current form. It's what makes it such an amazing story. These are not all-star Korean players. This is a group that Samsung pulled together. They finished fourth in summer in the most recent LCK split. And if we're handing out medals, we got to hand one out to Crown as well, because he has been carrying a huge amount of their game. He absolutely has, even more so when he's gifted those sorts of kills. Equalizer's decent from Odo, and all it's going to do is slow down Samsung Galaxy. Flashes over the wall. That's a kill onto Crown. That's the shutdown goal, which could be so pivotal, but it's at the cost of a tower. QV takes another up top. There's still a minute and a half of Baron buff, and QV's not done. Last game he did it with Echo, this game he's doing it with Jace. 
He plays the map better than anybody else on the uh, in the rift. Yeah, he's so annoying in that side lane. H2K can't really deal with him because he can never kill him 1v1 due to the picks, but also due to his very smart play, and he's really hard for him to catch. He doesn't really get caught out that often, other than we have seen a few ganks early on, but that's just well played by Yankos, camping that lane. And Samsung are fine seeing that top lane die because they always get a drag and get a kill on the other side of the map. So they keep trading his life for something else. As much work as Yankos has done and as hard as he has tried, it just seems to be falling through the fingers here for H2K as Samsung once again a very, very solid hold on this map. Look at the very few wards here for H2K as they're trying to get back out onto the map to get some room to play with. Yeah, and it's so hard for H2K draft-wise because they really want to get a winning 2v2 bottling, but they just can't with the Caitlyn being banned away. And then they also get ganked by Ambition a few times, making it even harder because Yankos is spending time topside while then Forgiven and Vander are left alone on the bottom side for most of the early game. And then Ryu losing mid lane. It just means the bottom side is controlled by Sam. Two games in a row now, basically. And it kind of stops H2K from playing the way they like to play, where every single lane is dominating and winning. Look at that step. 6,000 average gold power play. He's going to be the target of a curtain call. It's a little bit of a deal there, as he's forced to run away. Ambition looking to jump in. So no real uh, kill threat just yet. Yankos and Odo, they're going to go toe to toe. Kubay gets to the more about what just trades a kill. In a two-on-one, even the best players will die. That's what Yankos proves. I mean, Kyufei was solo killing Impact, now he's solo killing Odoamne. Now, Ambition is actually under attack, but he's Olaf, should be able to walk away. Kyufei hates Western top lane. He's just killing all of them alone here, and being such a big threat in the game. Samsung constantly playing four men together, and then the odd man out, sitting there and taking down towers. It's even more impressive when you look at how the fact he was ganked a couple times. He lost his tower for Tower First Blood, yet still has a CS advantage, still has this gameplay advantage, and making Jace show off what it should do against top tier players. Yeah, just to add a little bit more credibility to that, in the interview they had with Sveb, he was talking about how Odawamne and Impact were the two best top laners as far as laning phase that he did play against. And here is Qve coming in and destroying them. I think it's important for the story, though, to highlight that QV wasn't always, like, a fantastic top lane. He had, honestly, a very rough road to this World Championship. You know, he joined the organization two years ago after the, the big Samsung White team split up, Samsung Blue as well. And he's been with them ever since. But he was not considered a good top lane last year at all. Gotten better and better, but not played at this level until now. Oh, well, he hasn't. Crown's gonna be able to get away for now. Flash forward, Yankos gets the kick. Crown gets a gigantic shield. Strangleforce will hold Ryu in place. Flash over the wall from Cube, looking for more, but he's eaten up four members of H2K. Almost gets the kill. Curtain Call might be able to clean up. Very good route from Core JJ. Equalizer doesn't do enough to help out. It's a two for two, and Ambition's looking for more. Ragnarok was used to get into the fight, but he can't get any more kills. Good start there from H2K, though, getting that pick and getting some kills and gold back back in their pockets to try and get back into this game. Samsung, don't give up on the play though. After Crown gets kicked in, they still follow up and Ruler on this Jin can follow up from such a long distance. You didn't have to be there. But HK trying to do what they can do to get back in this game. Just keep looking for fights. See if you can outplay them. Great ulti from Crown stopping three members, but Yanka's still gonna get him. They take down the first guy. It looks okay, but there's a lot of damage now on the rest of H2K. And the only thing they got so far was one kill. And QV goes super deep. Looks like he's going to be the next sacrifice. But then Jin Ultimate lands, and the snare from Core JJ keeps them in range of the Jin Ultimate, allowing Ambition to chase. Great play by Samsung Galaxy. I think they got that Ocean Drake while we were in the replay as well. I'm just going to put one last little uh, cap on this QB discussion. Um, here at Worlds, got the most solo kills. So 1v1 out of any player. He's up to 14. He was leading Worlds in terms of solo kills as the semifinal started. He's picked up a handful more this series. And this was against Odo, who was a man who was doing similar things, but arguably against weaker competition. Yeah, I mean, if you love underdog stories, you gotta love Samsung here. I mean, the way that they clawed their way into Worlds with Ambition playing since 2012 and never getting here. Now in his first time here, they make it all the way to semifinals and have this strong of a showing. And all the other members have kind of similar stories, multiple role swaps and coming from different leagues. It's, uh, 
really great what they've been able to accomplish here on the international stage. The team didn't make playoffs more than once the last two years. And the one time they didn't make playoffs, funny enough, was in the summer split. Got them into the gauntlet as well. Beat KT 3-2, to two, and now here we are. In some ways, the struggling team story is fitting of both squads. Because H2K have traditionally not done well. Curtain Call flies out, and H2K over the last few years been looking for success. They had a showing at Worlds, drawn into an incredibly tough group. Um, but very different players, of course. This and might be uh, the fight, Trevor, though, for H2K. If they ever want to get back into this game, they need to win this Baron fight here. Odana's well, keeping in behind them. Crown is sitting in the bush here. Yeah, but Cube is coming in from behind H2K. Oh. Yankos is looking for more. The equalizer looks good. Look at the backline. Oh. Odana's going forward, but Ambition's running for more. They've traded AD Carry for support. It's not done yet. Cube is unforgiven. Cube has got forgiven. Fan is not going to be able to turn it back around. Three members of H2K are down. Cube is going to look for those shock blasts. Goes back into the Mercurial form. Not going to fire it out. It's a one for three, and they don't get enough. A valiant effort there from H2K. They do stop the Baron for now. Lily Samson Galaxy are low. Ryu and Vanda. Can they pull off a miracle? It's a 2v4. Vanda throws up the speed boost. Baron is helping out with some damage. No, will not be enough. And Samsung Galaxy secure the Baron. A lot of low members in that fight, but HGK didn't have the damage to take them down. And that means another Baron for Samsung. Bigger advantage. That was the fight, honestly, for HGK to get back in this game. Sadly for them, Odamna joined. The fight maybe slightly later than Yankos had expected. He obviously couldn't do anything different because he was running down from top. Yankos doesn't get the proper kick off either. And then just look at what the Jace is doing here to Forgiven. If Forgiven wins this 1v1, HK can actually take the fight. But this Jace is super strong. Yeah, I mean, man, Cuve playing front line there as Rumble was coming in. And it looked like Oduame was going to clean up the back line from Samsung there, but not able to get it off. And uh, Samsung do come away with the Baron in the end. So H2K options are closing. Absolutely. 10,000 gold down. Now they've got a couple dragons under their belts. Two fights are so one sided with that item lead. And the damage lead with another Baron buff as well. Now, HUK, they need to play full defensive mode. Try and uh, farm up and defend these inhibitor turrets. They do have you know, some wave clear here, but it's going to be very, very difficult for them to pull this off. Especially when you consider how good Samson Galaxy play on multiple lanes. Oh, and look at the damage from Jace on the turret. Go in, pop your W, get a few hits super, super quickly down on the tower with your Baron buff, with your extra AD from these items here, and there's really nothing Odamne can do to defend, and now the base is open. We are looking for one insane fight. Well, going to need more than that if H2K want to win, but they'll need one to stop this push for Given. Gets out of range of the curtain core. The allies are thrown down. They've got themselves a kill to call JJ. They found Ruler, but where's Crown and Cubey? Those are the two we got to follow. Ryu's looking for Crown. They've managed to get uh, one, uh, one trade back. H2K have lost Odo. They've now lost Forgiven. It's all on Ryu. Ryu's going low. Defensive flash from Vander and Cubey untouched in the H2K base. They've got an inhibitor top. They've got an inhibitor middle. And the base is in shambles. What an awesome ulti from Ryu, though. Completely surprised Samsung. He appeared behind Samsung here with multiple members from H2K and actually picked up a lot of kills. The problem is, this Jace and this Olaf are just sitting in the H2K's back line and returning the favor. It really was an impressive ult. H2K not going down without a fight here as they step in behind the back line, take them out so quickly. But then, you know, Crown tries to fight his way out uh, one versus three there and takes the kill as he's able to escape. Yankos, I think, finishes him off by himself up on the top side off map uh, here. But then, as you said, Cuvee was untouched and he is a monster inside the base. Cuvee, 5-5-3, five, five 292 CS. Looking to push home the second win in this best of five. And, you know, we told the Samsung story quite a lot, but I think it's also fair to talk about H2K. Um, this year has been fraught with challenges. And this World Championship is the best form that this team has, I think, ever had. The players have shown up, they've had great play, they've looked good. And now the pressure is on for them to show that they can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Samsung Galaxy. Yeah, and I think the best thing for H2K has been the meta. Like the change that happened after 6.15, removal of lane swaps, obviously. Oh. They're trying again in the bottom lane. There's a lot of support for Samsung Galaxy. Yankos is looking for 4JJ, but he will not find him. He's grounded thanks to the poison. 
Crown's gonna be able to pop the GA. Now Samsung are flanking for Given and the rest of H2K. Ambition throws down the Ragnarok. Doesn't have Ghost, but doesn't even need it. Ryu just gets dunked. The hammer comes down. The Given throws up the spell shield. Samsung Galaxy shields flying wide. Strangle Thor's not even needed. Three kills for Samsung. They're inside the base. H2K, they are getting destroyed. Flash away from Forgiven, and Core JJ is the only kill that H2K can secure. Samsung Galaxy are one win away from Staples and a shot at the World Championship title. I feel like Game 2 reminds me a lot of Game 1, honestly, where Samsung are able to either trade whenever H2K is doing something or even beat H2K at certain parts of the early game, especially around the bottom side of the map and the mid lane where Crown is just outplaying Ryu at the moment, and it gives Samsung enough gold early on to at least stay even. And then you get to that mid to late game where they are just so good and where they're much stronger than H2K as a team. And the main hope for H2K so far has been Yankos. Yankos has definitely showed up here versus Samsung. He has been as much as you can ask uh, from a jungler so far. Sadly for him, Ambition is also here to play. Yeah. And a mirror what Yankos is doing all the time. And it, it, again, it really hurts H2K that the bot lane, due to the picks and due to the jungle pressure, can't get that big advantage. And Ryu not able to get the advantage in mid lane. And that just means you don't win the early game all of a sudden. And you have to play the Samsung game. Let's stop um, uh, uh, taking a look at sort of the gameplay decisions where I think it's pretty clear that Samsung has the edge. Let's look at those two game drafts. Is there anything that H2K could tweak or change knowing their red side, knowing they can get two theoretical power picks? Because if they're not able to get those lanes going in this next game, their world championship run ends today. A big problem has also been, you know, once they transition to the mid phase, Samsung have had the upper hand in the split push both times. Yep. And Samsung work with that very well. Uh, I mean, you can always see them immediately go to the other side of the map for those uh, cross map sort of answer plays whenever HUK go for something. So when HUK make a victory, it ends up being even as Samsung answer, but then they also still will retain an extra minion wave here and there. So this game, they could have gone Jace if they wanted to, instead of giving it over. Yeah. They went for Rumble, went for team fight, could have gone for Jace. Problem was they already had so much physical damage, so you have to swap the lease in for at least jungle as well. So there could be a few tweaks. Bot lane wise, Gonna need a lot of tweaks. Yeah, gonna need a lot, obviously. But bot lane, if Forgiven doesn't play Jin, there might be a limit on what he can pick if, if you dominate the if lane. If Forgiven doesn't play an AD carry or won't play an AD carry, it's a discussion that Forgiven has had about his gameplay for a very long time. Let's hand it down to the analyst desk to hear what they say about game number two. Thank you very much. Quick shot. Samsung Galaxy now here in the driver's seat. 2-0 in the series, looking more dominant than they have before. Let's go ahead and continue that line of questioning there that the casters had on Champion Select. I got to call into question this Sivir pick now, two, two games in a row. Yeah, I think that you have to actually question the whole pick ban phase because you see the misfortune ban come out. And then they're not willing to pick the Zyra, which is why you ban the misfortune in the first place because the priority is lower. So why are you even banning the misfortune in the first place? This is one of those pick ban phase where it looks like you're banning exactly what beat you. And then you give over, once again, just an incredibly potent draft from start to finish. We can't fault them for first picking Rise, though. I think no. there are still answers mm -hmm. in, into the Zyra just to Jin. Like, Forgiven has practiced in Solo queue. This guy has mechanics. You can just blow that champion up. And, and with, with Karma Jin, you have much more pressure. Yeah. They had CS lead eventually, but very early on, you could see that they were struggling in the matchup. Yeah, I didn't necessarily mind the first pick Rise or even the response by Samsung. I thought Samsung came out with a way better draft, but that's just because it definitely felt like H2K was almost afraid to go with the picks that they should have. Like, the Jace wasn't necessarily picked, the Jin wasn't picked when they had the chance tonight, and they just got completely outdrafted in that sense. Because when we looked at the Samsung team composition, we're thinking, wow, they have a power position in every single role here. And for me, well, what struck me the most was in the early game, there was that early ward that H2K placed in the enemy jungle. They knew exactly where Ambition was starting on the OAF. Then they warded his blue buff, and for that First five minutes of time, the enemy jungle was perfectly tracked. Yet Yankos mm -hmm. fell behind one single camp. And a lot of viewers are watching like, who cares? It's a single camp. Like, why are you whining? But it just means like, if you do that to Samsung and you give them the deep vision, they will get so much more of it. Yes, Yankos afterwards went off and had a really set, a good couple of ganks, but it's just a few, the things in the early game, HK need to do more with the vision. And it shows 
uh, so apparently later in the game as well around these Baron setups. Yeah, and that's the microcosm of what Samsung has been like against other teams in this tournament. They get scouted in the red buff at level one because they did a four-man invade bottom. And they start red side. That is actually a very big mistake that can be punished. If the enemy team makes that, Samsung punishes it. But if Samsung makes that, the other teams haven't been able to. And that's what's happened the whole game. Yeah, and once again, we see a game that explodes at 15 to 20 minutes. And we're talking about mistakes. This time, it's not actually off a proactive Samsung play. H2K siege up mid lane turret, completely fumble, don't hit the last two shots, and they lose top and bottom in response because there's only three members defending out of Samsung. In reality, that should be the turret falling down, at least one kill onto the all, uh, onto, uh, I think it was the support at the stage. Yep. And that just turns the game completely on its head. Instead, H2K can't pull the trigger, and they just keep making these little mistakes that are capitalized on. Well, but let's talk about how we got to that point, because once again, we see Yanko's doing a lot of work yep. in the early game, games. getting that first blood up up on the top lane. But of course, they're trading that for an Infernal Dragons. And while that's happening, we of course are seeing the bot lane struggle. And then Ryu once again getting yeah. completely decimated by Crown in the mid lane. I mean, we're talking about bot lane pick bad, and that is that is up to the players and the coach there. And honestly, Forgiven and Vander did a very serviceable job at going slightly behind, eventually going up. But Ryu is not pulling his weight right now. The fact that Crown can consistently get out of laning phase with multiple kills in the lead, they tried to attack him, two man got out play, giving him a couple of kills right there. You cannot do that against a player of the caliber that is Crown. Yeah, 100%. And the other thing that if we're going to talk about the focus on top lane, I know that we've talked about in the past, if you go bottom, there's always a two for one bonus because there's two people down there, there's a turret and there's a dragon. So if you do camp top lane, you have to be so incredibly efficient with your time. Yankos is being efficient at the moment, but he's not getting the big enough snowball going for Odawamne because we saw that the in the end, the chase still turns into a massive pre uh, presence. Yeah, and I actually feel like QV is doing to the world stage what Impact did to like the North American regional qualifiers. <laughs> Right. He's getting a ton of solo kills every game with very little help and still just making everyone run after and try and defend him. He's been super impressive to me as well as Crown. I'm going to just say that Kuve is doing to the world stage what he was also doing to the gauntlet to juxtapose it as well at the LCK because this guy's been on fire for the last month and a half. Uh, really has been impressive in that regard. And of course, Krepo, now I want to return to the conversation around Barons because if we reference the very first Baron in this game, Samsung Galaxy contrasts that to H2K's decision making around the Baron. It was such a stark contrast. Yeah, it does build on the vision. We can see how easily they can take it, but it's again, it's it's all in a setup. Like, give that vision to H2K, they will make the same Baron call. Mm. The thing is, they just don't have the vision because one, Samsung fights it aggressively, and just it's little things working together, these little step supports, basing at the right time, pushing up the side lanes. Macro is such a intangible, invisible concept, but Samsung, they nail it, and that's why consistently. Their mid-game starts at 15, 16 minutes, and they always get an advantage, even though it seems like the opponent is handing it over to them. But, but when it happens every single game at World so far, we have to credit yeah. Samsung for it. And then, of course, their utilization of the Baron is massive. We saw the statistic in the drop-down in-game, averaging about 6.5k in their Baron power plays, is extremely, uh, is extremely large. But now I want to go ahead and take a look at the valiant effort put together by H2K to stop Samsung's second Baron. This one presented to you by Acer. Yeah, and this is one of those team fights where you've already fallen behind and you're like, we have to go at some point. So they look for the play. Unfortunately, the gold lead is just a little bit too great. But look at Forgiven here. Perfect spell shield, duels the chase. It feels so bad. One auto, two auto, Q auto, boom, he's dead. Like that has to oh. feel so disappointing. This was a, such a well played team fight here. Perfect. Flank equalizer almost by Oduwamne. He was grilling the backline. And meanwhile, while Forgiven was getting soloed by the Jace, Ryu just got caught by the stun from the Cassiopeia. So he would have actually had a chance to clean up. It was very close. But once again, Samsung just kind of wins in those very small ways. And it turns into a pretty dominating thing here with four people at Baron. And you can't lose the team fight on multiple fronts. You can't have Forgiven uh, dueling the top lane or lose, you know mid laner walking to other mid laner stun. When you lose multiple micro interactions, the team fight's never going to go your way. And you just saw that is exactly what came out. And that is the second game in a row that Ryu has done pretty much the least damage in the game. And of course, we did see at the very start of that replay, Yankos kicking uh, Crown out of that Rumble Ultimate. And that just shows a little bit of that miscommunication within the fights themselves. Well, it's mostly because Crown flashed himself, though they were learning how to play against Yankos as Lee Sin. They said, you know, this guy gets close, respect him, flash first. Yeah, I will also say, though, that Yankos was shorting a few war jumps and putting them in some weird places. He started the game incredibly clean, and this actually makes me worry for H2K because when they've been rolling, they've definitely been rolling, but these guys have been known to tilt in longer series, and when your play degrades during a game in which you're losing, it's really hard to bounce back. Right, exactly. We talked about it at the beginning of the day. One of these teams is going to have to suffer a loss right after the get-go, having been on pretty large win streaks coming in. H2K now down two games, have to put together three wins to get back into the series. 
and Samsung Galaxy swapping back to blue side with no substitution. So how do they mount a victory here? Yeah, I mean, when you have a look at it, this is where the mental fortitude really does get caught into question. We've been saying all uh, tournament long, like how long can this streak actually continue for? Was it a supernova? How good is this rookie lineup in Samsung? And the answer is they're pretty damn good. So right now, if you're H2K, you need to go back to a comfort draft. Once again, try and execute on top side of the map, I think. But I just don't know if you can lose bottom lane by that much and mid lane by that much. And one thing that I'm impressed by as well is Samsung coming into this event or coming into this series had won all the games they got first blood and lost the one game where they didn't get first blood. So it's like, how are they going to deal if they actually fall behind? They've gotten first blooded by Yankos in both of these games. Hasn't mattered. The only caveat being they had Nidalee. So I want to see H2K get rid of the Nidalee. I still think on purple side they can just draft fine enough. They can find enough answers. Pick and ban is has been revealing so many answers to the current meta picks and even the newer picks like Misfortune probably could find that solution. Just don't be stubborn, switch it up, go for comfort picks just like Spawn said, and then maybe just go all out on the early game. They have the talent to take at least one game. Samsung Galaxy looking unbeatable. We'll see if H2K can extend our series. Stick around, we'll be right back with match point between Samsung Galaxy and H2K.